First and foremost, I want to thank all you guys for all your support, all your prayers, all that you, have, you guys have done for, my, for me, my family, for Anthony. You guys mean the world to us, and we just want to, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you guys for all that you did. Give yourself a hand. Thank you. Also, I want to acknowledge uh, some people that are here. Uh, they were first responders to Anthony, and uh, there are two Michelles right here. I want to give them a hand because they're very special to my family. We love you guys. We really do. Uh, thank you. So let's get into it, guys. Um, I just want to start by saying I am so thankful to God and um, all that he has got us through. Um, it, it looked impossible. But like the song said, nothing's impossible for Christ because he overcame the world. He overcame all sin. He overcame everything that had to do with this dying world. He came down from a throne and took our place and died for each and every one of our sins. Give him a hand. So tonight I want to share a little bit of, the, of, of what happened, um, and I want to just fill you guys in. Um, from the beginning, man, you know, I, me and my daughter, Jotsi, um, you know, we ran out and we, we, we were looking for Anthony, and um, it wasn't good. Um, I'm not gonna get into too crazy of a detail, um, not just yet, if you guys understand that. Um, but, you know, through Christ and his power and Holy Spirit, I was able to bring him back. Um, it was the hardest thing I ever done in my life. I don't know how I did it, I know that he had all control, and I know that he guided, he, he led me through each step of the way into bringing him back. And I just love him for that because he never forsake me. It looked really bad. It looked really lonely at the time, but then all of a sudden it just clicked. Boom. And I just felt uplifted, and I just felt strong, and I felt positive, and um, it was just amazing, the, the touch of God on my life at that moment, seeing my wife, seeing my daughter next to me, it was powerful. I, I just, I couldn't believe how I was standing. I couldn't believe it. But God is amazing. He is. So with that being said, I wanna, I wanna just say, I wanna name this sermon right here the, that we walk by faith and not by sight. And that's exactly what we did. As a church body, as a family, each and every one of us, we walked by faith and not by sight because the sight looked very bad. The sight was unbearable. The sight was disaster. But the faith was there the whole time. The faith never broke. It might have got weak. But then we have brothers and sisters that came and lifted it up. They came beside us and said, no, 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 hold up. We trust and we believe God. And I ain't going to lie to you. I'm not going to stand here and say that I was strong the whole way because I wasn't. But about three days in, I, I believe it was when we came to the service. I walked into the service after having an awesome prayer at the hospital with all my brothers, they came down to the hospital and we went to battle, man. We broke down walls of the enemy and we attacked. We ambushed. <laughs> They're laughing, that's the inside joke. We ambushed the enemy and we broke down walls. When I got off up from the floor, I felt like I was gonna pass out but I felt God's spirit, and I felt him say, we won this one. And I, I, I couldn't believe it, but I knew that 
we got through it. And when we went back upstairs, we started to see things change in the atmosphere. All right? And just to let you guys know, you know, we, we got treated real bad. We went through a lot of things in uh, this place. I'm not going to say no names. But we had also awesome people there. We had people that really cared and wanted to see Anthony get better. So with that being said, I came to the church that service that Wednesday night, and I was battling with a lot of what ifs. What if I would have did it this way? What if I would have went this way? What if I would have got there sooner? What, all of this what ifs, man, and it was eating me alive. And I, and I couldn't show it because I had to be strong for my family. I had to be strong for them. And when I came here, I walked into a, a dark place. It was dark. It was, there was worship going on and stuff. And I was just like, man, this is not right. Something's not right here. And then God spoke to me and said, I need you to pull up your pants and give a message for me. So as I walked on stage, Derek was playing a slow song, and I told him to stop. I said, play a fast song. Because we're not in a burial. My son is alive. Give God praise. But how hard is it to walk by faith when things look so bad? How hard is it? It's hard for us. As believers, it's hard for us to walk by faith, not by sight. Imagine how hard it is for the world. The ones that don't have Jesus in their life. The ones that don't have hope. Guys, I tell you, man, there was hopelessness in that hospital. The whole time that I was there, I was working for the Lord. I was helping families that were hopeless. People telling them, pull the plug. People telling them they're not going to make it. People telling them it's not going to happen. There is no hope. And, I, and me and my family, were there and we're like, whoa, wait a minute. We know somebody that has hope. We know somebody that provides hope. His name is Jesus. And we serve him. And he has done a miracle in our son's life. And he can do the same for you. So don't give up. Don't pull no plug. Let the doctors do what they do. Let God do what he does. <laughs> but I want to I give you a few, few reasons why it's so hard for us and for the world to walk by faith and not by sight. We got too many distractions. Can I hear amen? amen? Let me give you one distraction. Facebook. Sorry. I go on Facebook. Not too much, though. T TV. Television, that's another one. Hobbies, how many of you guys have hobbies? You go out and you'd rather go to do something that you enjoy doing instead of coming to church on Sunday, instead of being here on Wednesday. This is awesome. I wish every Wednesday was like this, but it's not. It's not. There's a few that will come on Wednesday. Another one, friends. That's a tough one, huh? What about family? Even family would distract you from your walk with Christ. I, I, honestly, they're probably one of the worst. You have unsafe family members and you're a Christian, it's a big problem. You know, you, you waste so much time and energy trying to get them to Christ that you're distracted from what your walk with Christ is. And it robs us. 
It robs us from the peace that the Holy Spirit instored in us. It takes it away. Because we got so much drama. When we should be serving and worshiping God, we're out there arguing and, and trying to do things to please our own desires. It robs us from the, the peace that God has given us. I want to take you to a scripture, and it's in John 16, 31 through 33. Can you put that up for me? Jesus answered them, and Jesus answered them, do you, I'm sorry, go back. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Behold, an hour is coming and, I, and has already come for you to be scattered each to his own home and to live and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. It goes to peace. See, God gives us the peace, but all the distractions take it away. So that in me you will have peace. In the, in the world you have tribulations, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Amen. See, see God, God took us from a bad place, right? He takes us from this sinful lifestyle that we live. And he, and he shows us a new way. But sometimes we get curious and we want to go back to that way. And it all has to do with distractions. All those that I mentioned. A little bit of everything. It takes and it robs our peace. And God says, be, be strong and hold on because I have overcome the world. Amen. He saved me from a dying destination. He changed me. And I'm not perfect, guys. I make mistakes every day. But the difference is now that there's conviction in my life. The difference is that when I mess up, I go straight to God and I say, God, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. And through the, through the Holy Spirit and through his word, I get back on track. Through people that are in my life, I get back on track. See, before I didn't care about that. It didn't matter to me. I didn't care who I hurt. I didn't care who was watching. It just didn't matter to me. Now it matters. <clears throat> I'm going to take you guys to another scripture. And it's in Romans 12.3. Put that up real quick. For through grace given to me, I say, I say to everyone among you not to think more highly of, you, of yourself, himself, than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has a lot, what? A lot. a lot to each of measure of faith. Can you put New Living Translation on that? <laughs> Thank you. I thought I said that before. <laughs> yeah. See, I, was, I, I practiced all of this, but now it's like new words, and I'm like, wait a minute. Right. Thank you. <laughs> See, we got to be honest with ourselves. Where is your faith? How solid is your faith, guys? This might sting a little, but are you a part-time Christian? Got real quiet. Are you a part-time Christian? Do you come to church on Wednesday, 
Friday, and Sunday? Or do you take church out to the world with you? Because we're called to go out into the world and preach the gospel. So is it only Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday? Or are you worshiping before getting here? Are you worshiping everywhere else that you go and, and, and encounter with people? See, I think the difference is relationship and religion. If you're a religious person, it's very difficult to have a relationship with Christ. See, a relationship with Christ is so important because you get to spend time with the God that saved you. See, and you can walk through faith because you know and you believe that he has saved you and you know that he's with you. When you're in a religion, it's very easy to doubt because you don't have the total understanding of what a relationship with Christ is. God called us to have relationships with people. When God came down, he came down to build relationship. See, you don't have to dress a certain way to come here. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to be a certain nationality. We welcome each and every one of you here. See, but I've been to churches where as soon as I walked through the door, they were like, Isn't that sad? It's so sad, man, because that is not the word of God. You see, they're living on these, these commandments that God gave back in the day, man, these Ten Commandments. But they, they seem to miss the, the one main commandment. It's love. Love your neighbor. Love your enemies. Love people. That's all he wants us to do. Everything else will fall into place if we love. We have to build relationships with people. You have to be available for people to have a relationship with you. When your brother and sister calls you, are you there? Do you run? Or do you make an excuse and say, well, I can't right now can't do it right now. When somebody asks you for prayer, do you pray? Do you say, yeah, I'll pray for you later? I love Pastor Larry because when I ask him to pray for something, he's like, let's pray right now. <laughs> That's how it should be. Let's go to another scripture. It's in James, <laughs> James 1. Two and four. Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Let me stop right there. See, trouble came my, my way and my family's way. I don't know. Did Anthony step out? He did. Okay. Trouble came. Okay, for... For two months, my son was battling depression. And me and my family stood there and watched the enemy suck the life out of my son. And there was nothing that we could do about it. There was nothing, man. We brought him to church. Our pastors came over. His friends came over. And there was nothing that was getting him out of that darkness. Again, he focused on some distractions. He started looking up some things that were totally wrong. Started looking up about people going to hell and how worthy they were. And, you know, uh, it, he started doubting if he was even going to go to heaven. He started saying that God told him to, to kill himself. He started saying that he was going to be the president. 
He, he was just in total darkness. So trouble was in my house. But me and my family, we serve God. And all we can do is pray. All we can do is believe. So we, we, we believed and we prayed for Anthony. But he was so far gone that it was too late. It was too late. There was nothing we can do. But the Bible says that when you come into trouble, then you should find joy in it. What? Why? Why does it say that? Let's see. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Ooh. When your faith is tested, your endurance grows. So what do we do? So let it grow. Let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Amen. Give God praise. You see, we endure these trials and tribulations with my son. But now we have joy. Now we stand here and we give God glory. Our faith grows. Our endurance gets stronger. I don't know about you, but this is very tough. I don't, I don't think there'd be a lot more tougher than that. For me, at least. So yes, it built me and it made me stronger. It gave me boldness. I was able to walk up to people in hospitals and in rehab and say, yo, God loves you. He wants to save you. He, wants, he died for you. Yeah, I was bold before, but not like this. My endurance grew. My faith grew. What is the meaning of endurance? The fact, the power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving up. Process. See, God never said it would be easy. And like my, one of my favorite rappers said, he just said it would be worth it. See, because at the end, we go to heaven. Amen. At the end of all these trials and tribulations, we have no more sorrow. The Bible says there's no more tears. So for a little while, the Bible says that we'll suffer. But after comes joy and worship with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Guys, anybody in here battling with depression? Anybody in here struggling with their marriage? Anybody in here struggling with their walk with Christ? Anybody in here struggling with just making it another day? Anybody in here that is lost and doesn't have a relationship with Christ tonight is the day for you to make a decision for God. Tonight is a special night, and God is all over this place right now. And he is waiting and willing to save. And you guys just need to say, you know what? I don't care what people think. I don't care what people might say. I need a relationship with Christ. I need him to help me through this. Because life is hard, man. 
Life is hard, and, we, and we're, when we're doing it without Jesus, it's, it gets harder. You know? And then when we do it with Jesus, yes, it gets hard, but guess what? The reward gets bigger. There's a place for each and every one of you. He is preparing it. As we speak right now, people that don't have a relationship with Christ, he is preparing your place because he knows what's going to happen tonight. He knows that a lot of people in here don't have a relationship with him, so he's preparing the room right now. Are you going to take your spot or are you going to let it slide? Are you going to walk out of here without a relationship and go out there and try to find religion? Or are you going to seek the opportunity, man, and say, God, that's my room. That's my room up there. Prepare it. I like king size bed. Nice flat screen TV, <laughs> Netflix, <laughs> to watch sermons. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, I I'm serious though. Tonight is the night for salvation. Don't let it slip away for you. It's very important. It's one of the... the most important things you will ever do in your life. And if God can raise Anthony from the dead, literally, literally died in my arms, guys. And God used me to breathe his life into him and rose him up and then use people to keep it going. I wrote a little, a little verse I wanted to share with you guys. And it, it goes like this. I'm not going to use music or anything. I'm just going to kind of speak it. And it says, man, devil, you a liar. You thought you had my son so gone that he'll retire. You threatened to pull the wire. Okay, I get it. These doctors don't understand. They're leaning on medicine. I lean on the son of man. I'm holding on to his promises. We'll make it to the end. I thought I told you before, against Christ, you will never win. So fall back, little devil. I'm putting the pedal to metal. You mess with the wrong lawyer. This family ain't going to settle for nothing you got to offer. I gave my life to the author of beginning and the end. My faith it will never author. See, devil wants to take a situation and make it so big. And then God steps in and turns it all around on him. Because you see, he has no authority. And I think the problem is that we don't understand the authority that we are given through Christ. And sometimes our faith is shaken because of it. So when we pray, we pray, God, please help us. God, please heal us. Touch people. When we should be saying, we command you. We bring healing in the name of Jesus. See, and we have to speak it with authority. See, because when, when the devil's around and he hears your little prayer, God, help us, he's just laughing at you. But when you say, in the name of Jesus, be healed, he goes, oh, okay, I can't mess with that. Authority, guys. We are called to be the light, the salt of the world. There's a dying world out there. How many know that? Raise your hand. You all know that. This world is going down the pipes. And it's up to each and every one of us in here 
to get in and join and march for Christ out there. Bring the word out there. Bring the hope out there. You know, we wait so much for people to come in here, but we need to be going out there. We need to be showing what God has done in your life out there. See, it's, it's, it doesn't make no sense to share with believers what God has done because we're all believers. The people that really need to hear it are out there. So we need to put all our pride aside. We need to put all our problems aside. And we need to go out there as a body of Christ. One of the scriptures, if you keep reading on, it says we are one body. We're one body and we're called to go out into the world and use each and every function of that body. We need to join in, guys. John 8, 12. <clears throat> Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. You see, he is the light of the world. And what does this, the Bible say about us? We're the light and the salt. So he's given us the same authority. Before he ascended, he said, you will do greater things than I did. But what's the problem? The lack of faith. Lack of faith. Where's your faith? Is it solid? Are you letting it grow? Are you reading your Bible? Are you spending time in a relationship with Christ? I know I wasn't. I am now. I hope you guys do the same because we, we're running out of time, guys. I mean, look at these elections. <laughs> Let's not go there. Honestly, if I had a choice, I won't do none of them. But, you know, we have to be involved, you know. And I'm going to show um, a video in just a second. Can you guys uh, call Anthony for me? Somebody get Anthony. I'm just going to stall you guys for a second. Knock, knock. I don't know no jokes, so. <laughs> You're stuck with just staring at me. But now I'll share a little, a little testimony. I remember one, one day I was in in Brooks, and they, the doctor came to me and he said, Ronnie, it doesn't look good. So I said, Doc, his name was Dr. No. <laughs> Dr. No Go. What kind of name is that? So everything you ask is no. Like, literally, it was like that. You know, guy from Brooks came to evaluate Anthony at Lee Memorial, and he says, doctor, you know, I'm standing right here in front of Anthony. He looks good. You know, can we bring him now? He says, no. I'm like, why? I said, no. And I'm standing there listening to the conversation. And he goes, doctor, no go. I said, that's his name? He's like, yeah. Like, oh, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Literally took three times of him coming and evaluating him to take them, take him up to Brooks. But I was in Brooks and he came to me, that doctor, and he said, Ronnie, your son has a, a leak. It's a CSF leak. It's coming from the brain. We have to operate immediately. So I went over there and I said, okay, let's go. So they took us over to a hospital nearby. And um, 
we got there, and none of the doctors knew what was going on. They, they ain't know Anthony. They ain't have no records. So I'm like, so you guys just want to operate on my son? They're like, yeah. We, you know, he has this leak. I said, how do you know it's a leak from the brain? They go, well, you know, it's common, you know, head injuries. I said, do you, did you do tests? Did you do any further evaluations? They're like, no, we just know. Like, you ain't touching my son. No go. <laughs> and it took two weeks, guys, finally, for them to all get on board. Wow. Two weeks we were there. And I was like, nope, 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 nope. Everybody on the same page? Nope. <laughs> so come on, puppy. So um, finally, they were all on the same page. And I said, OK, now you can go. Let's give a hand for Anthony, man. He's run. Got it, buddy. Here you go. Take a sip, puppy. Got it. Good. Swallow it. Good job. You open your eyes for me. I'm take another sip. Anthony's had a rough day today. He was, I almost didn't bring him. Honestly, this is a little too much for him, but I wanted you guys to be able to see him. God has done amazing work in him. Okay, they told me he would be a vegetable. They told me he wouldn't do anything for us, but thumbs up. That was a liar. Right. You, you want to say hi? Say thank you for all your prayers. Yes, Say it, buddy. Yeah. He's looking at Bridge, his ugly face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your prayers. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying hi to the little girl. Say thank you, buddy. it off strong, buddy. Say thank you for your prayers. Hear me. Take a deep breath and say thank you for your prayers. Want to? Like I said, there's a lot of distractions. It's a lot of stuff. Look at me and say thank you for your prayers. Yeah, Thank buddy. You, you got it. You got this, buddy. Got it. Yeah, 
They all love you, buddy. getting ready to close up so I have a few things that I want to share one thing is that video Michelle's we love you guys thank you for all you've done and I have one last scripture for you guys like I said this was very intimidating for Anthony just <coughs> all the stimulation but he wanted you guys to know something with this last scripture. Go ahead and cue it. Cue it. Yeah. You guys just watch the screen. Then put it up as loud as you can. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because... This plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. Praise man. See, he said God saved us and called us to live a holy life, not because, because we deserved, deserved it, but because he did this since before our time so that we can have grace through Jesus. See, he's called you guys since before time, since before you were born. He has a purpose for each and every one of you. He has a job for each and every one of you. Are you going to stand and say, I'll go, I'll do it? I'll take the responsibility, or are you going to walk out of here jobless? That's the question for you. And I, I like every head bow at this moment, every eyes closed, from side to side. Don't worry about the person next to you.